So thank you for coming back on time. Thank we should. Uh, thank Sonia for us coming back on time. So thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Ati, for ushering everybody in. Uh, we will start with our presentations now, and uh, we'll start with the first sector, which is CT in coding. We have uh, two presenters, one here and one online. So uh, without delay, let's get started. Parvati, ma'am. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Parvati from Global Public School, Kochi, Kerala. My topic is enhancing computational thinking in students through simulation and simulation tools. Next one. So in uh, global public school, we strongly believe in the power of computational thinking and its importance in this rapidly advancing world. So we have incorporated various simulation tools. For example, in Max, we have used uh, GeoGebra. For Science, we have used a PHET simulation. For Social, we have used Time Mapper. For uh, physics, circuit connection, AI, 3D, uh, 3D modeling, for all those things, we have used Tinkercad. Ma'am, next. So coming on to activity, here the main objective is using a simulation tool Tinkercad for verifying Ohm's law. So in this, uh, the main first you have to identify the problem is verifying Ohm's law. Further decomposing this into subunits, the first thing students have to do is identifying components. So here, the components required will be a breadboard, resistor, voltmeter, ammeter, and a power supply. So in Tinkercad, all these components are available at the right-hand side when you open Tinkercad, and you have to uh, select circuit. Then all these things are available. So just drag and drop it into a working area. Next comes the design phase, where students have to start connecting the various components. So when they connect components and when they click on the start simulation, sometimes it doesn't work. If the connection is not proper, it doesn't work. So again, they'll be uh, connecting, reconnecting it. Then at the evaluation phase, when they click on the start simulation button, ma'am, next. When they click on the start simulation button, uh, they have to input a voltage value. So according to that voltage value, they have to note down the corresponding current value. So this has to be documented. This has to be repeated three to five times, and they'll uh, document it in a table. Uh, so this actually, uh, after observing that table, they'll be able to understand the relation between voltage and current, which is directly proportional with the keeping the resistor value constant. Moving on to next activity, ma'am, next. This is another, um, another simulation tool called Time Mapper, which we use it for uh, social studies. This creates a uh, historic timeline. For example, here we have taken a Napoleonic war period. So in this Napoleonic war period, students have uh, decomposed. In, in this time mapper, we'll get a template of Google Sheet where uh, the year, event, description will already be there. So students have to uh, decompose the ent entire Napoleonic war period. For example, 1800, which battle took place? What is the description? So they will decompose each year what the corresponding event and what are the key points in that particular event, they will be noting it down. And then they just have to publish to web and upload it to that particular site. And after publishing it, ma'am, next. They will be seeing a timeline here. They can go through the timeline. At the right side, they'll see the geographical location where that event has happened. And at the right side, description of what they have given. So through this, this actually gives a visualization concept for children. So when you visualize something, that concept becomes very clear to us. Ma'am, next. Uh, this was actually a video showing different simulation tools across different subjects. Due to time constraint, I'll not be able to show this video. Ma'am, next. Next is the challenges. Uh, obviously, we'll have technical challenges. We'll have software glitches. We'll have connectivity issues. Uh, then compatibility problems. So we must be able to handle all those problems. Then next is contextual pedagogical integration. Coming on to this, uh, so what happens is uh, we need to exactly know where to implement, what to implement, and how to implement. We cannot implement simulation tool uh, on all the chapters. That's not possible. 
so uh, so whichever uh, so whichever particular uh, concept is not clear or which is difficult we have to identify it and we have to use simulation tools accordingly ma'am next ma'am next okay uh, now coming on to the impact uh, what we have done is we have divided uh, grade 8 students into two groups 15 and 15 and one uh, group did uh, simulation and then practicals the next group did uh, uh, practicals without doing the simulation so what we have observed is, ma'am, next. So after the practical, we have floated a Google form. And in that form, after the evaluation of that Google form, we came to a conclusion that you can see here, this uh, blue is the group A and uh, red is the group B. So group A, they, the confidence level of student was uh, better than those with, uh, who did not do the simulation work. And we also got this as uh, understanding concepts clearly. So those who have done simulation and then the practical, the concept was very clear to them and the confidence level was uh, in a most. Next. Oh, no, yeah, next, next. Thank yes. So we come to the conclusion that uh, although real uh, hands-on practical experience is a must, but simulation always offers a controlled and cost-effective environment for experiential learning. Thank you. So let me hand over the certificate. So Deepali ma'am couldn't come today, uh, so we'll be play playing her presentation. Uh, Good video. morning, one and all. Good morning, one and all present here. I, Mrs. Dipali Padikar, would like to present my abstract on topic computational thinking in coding. In our school, we introduce basic programming language to students from grade 2 onwards. It helps children to enter easily into the world of programming. I believe laying the building blocks in these early years can help your little ones to develop the skill of systematic approach towards solving a problem by developing computational thinking skills. Uh, let me give you a quick introduction to the MSW logo language that we have. We start with the basic programming called MSW logo that is Microsoft window logo language. So this is the screen of it. And the first one, as you can see, this is graphical window. And the next is, the second one is the commander window. Here, we type the commands. On the graphical window, there is triangle shape. And this is an on-screen cursor. That means, whichever command you will be giving from the commander window, your cursor will work accordingly. Now, here in the MSW logo, this on-screen cursor is named as a turtle. Let me introduce you to the turtle. So, here the pointed top is called as a head and this one is turtle's tail. This is the right hand side of the turtle and left hand side of the turtle. Now, remembering the head and tail, it is very easy but there is a confusion in the sides so uh, i would like to tell you the easiest way to remember the sides your right is turtle's right and your left is turtle's left isn't it easy to remember after this i have introduced them how turtle works what how how turtle function how you can work with the turtle so that it can draw for you because msw logo is basically a drawing app but here you need to type a code for this in the logo language let your student clear about the direction which is the forward direction back right left so that they can help the turtle reach to the home yes but the turtle does not know English language like how we communicate. 
it only understand the logo language so you need to introduce them the logo language to so, uh, move forward in direction suppose 20 steps so you need to write fd 20 like that if you want to move backward in direction then bk command if you want to take a left turn then lt command and right turn rt command uh, as you know, if you want to take a turn, you need to study about the degrees, right? But the grade stu student do does not know about the degrees, angles. So what you can tell them in the simple language uh, that if you want to take a perfect turn, use 90 steps. Yes, LT90 or RT90 like that. So let us start. Now you can uh, involve student into this. This is the group activity which I have conducted. Uh, I'm giving you small demo of it. So one student will hold the turtle actually and another student will note down the codes on the board. And you can display this. You can display this on the board so that student can remember. Student can take the reference from this and they will help out the turtle to reach the another end. So let us see quickly FD10 then you need to turn the turtle at left hand side and then only you can move at the left hand side. Yes, so LT90, FD50 like this you need to continue the activity till the turtle reaches to the end and once you reached you win. Like this, simply I have introduced them the functioning of the turtle. These are the glimpses of city-based activities conducted in class 3 for revision of the basic commands. Here I have made two volunteers from each row. One volunteer will be holding the cardboard of triangle shape which is turtle and another one will be noting down the uh, commands of, uh, on the board. Uh, let us see the challenges and variations. Creating lesson plan with more games or real life examples which will fit in the curriculum and teachers can complete in the time. In game based learning, searching games which is age appropriate and easily understandable by the student is the real challenge. Impact. Students are looking at the problem more logically and able to solve it more easily and effectively when they broke the problem into smaller parts. Students' responses rate are increased in the class uh, because of using the CT-based activity. I would like to thank Deepa ma'am and Sonia ma'am for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you ma'am. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Dipali ma'am. So next up, uh, we have a very interesting uh, set of presentations. Everybody seems to say that, you know, finally the government needs to, to do something and they need to intervene at all levels and finally it's the responsibility of the government. So now we will see what the government actually does. AP Andhra Pradesh has taken tremendous steps in implementing CT at the grass level, at the ground level and making sure that all their children are very participative and their teachers are very motivated in implementing CT skills. So I would request N. Sanjeeva Rao sir to please come up on stage. Let's have a very big round of applause for him. So I'd like, you, like to request you to please say a few words about your thoughts on implementing CT in your state. Thank you, sir. Good morning, the eminent personalities and enthusiastic participants. So after looking into the last year's proceedings and uh, last uh, day's proceedings and uh, now, uh, so, so much of uh, interesting uh, when we go back, uh, definitely things will happen more beautiful. But I am Sanjura here representing one of the uh, large government uh, sector in Andhra Pradesh by name 
Andhra Pradesh Social Welfare Residential Educational Institution Society, where uh, we are having 189 schools with uh, um, almost more than one lakh children. And uh, this is in, in, uh, in connection with the city initiative. Just uh, uh, I want to take you uh, a brief note of our institutions where uh, CT is being implemented. Next slide, madam. Next, please. So our journey with the CT started in 2018, and the partners were working with CS Patshala and TCS together, and uh, slowly it was started. Next. The last year, 2022-23, we did a good work and our teachers were almost trained and involved are uh, uh, 112 and we implemented this city program for class 6th to 8th and 56 schools were covered out of which 37 projects were prepared and uh, they were evaluated by CS Patashala and uh, 7 of our projects were selected and uh, it was very amazing that our children are doing a lot of uh, good things. And one more thing I want to add here is that all our children are a rural setup, rural background, and their parental background is al almost all illiterate parental background. That is our criteria for selection of students into our schools. So we are working uh, almost uh, great things uh, with the uh, um, rural sector children and uh, the first generation children. So next slide, please. So these are some glimpses of the projects that what we undertook uh, last year, 2022 and 2023, and uh, we made a uh, very good uh, um, practice in our classrooms. Next, please. Again, next. So these are the three areas where our children uh, presented uh, the projects last year. So accessibility in library using sensor board and a robot, and uh, digital spectacles for people with a neural disability and a communication skill building inclusive of for all. So these are three areas we took and uh, after taking the practical problems and uh, they find a lot of uh, uh, issues, a lot of things uh, they made it and uh, they compute and they presented their projects. What I told that 37 projects were made out of uh, uh, the last year. Next please. So the initiative that what we are going to take uh, this year so it is we expanded it so we ex we want to expand uh, the cs initiative in all of our 189 schools and uh, teacher training on city as we are going to take and the regular uh, learning circuits we want to make with our teachers and our t uh, the teams are also uh, going to visit and support the teachers in making the uh, ct program forward and uh, we also make the children to prepare for the brush challenge also. So there was a successful cases in previous years too. So next please. So last year it was uh, the thing, uh, in the last year's uh, CS, uh, uh, CTIS conference, fourth conference, three of our uh, teachers, uh, they were attended. And next please. And this year it was like this. So number was increased and a lot of good work is being done in our institutions. So next slide, please. So that is about uh, the journey because uh, after uh, the initiative of CS Patashala uh, with the uh, CT initiatives, so a lot of uh, the children are coming forward and uh, they are making a beauty of uh, work. Uh, we are also feeling very happy that uh, we are making our children more active in the classrooms. And uh, we this year we made it uh, as a curriculum, as a part of curriculum. Last year we uh, took it as, uh, as uh, some special case, but this year as a part of timetable and uh, we made it as uh, a curriculum. And uh, this year we are expecting more and more to do with our city uh, initiatives. Thank you all. I would like to request Lakshmi Gandhi, ma'am, to please come and chair the session. Thank you, Nikhil. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor and privilege to be associated with the 
CS Patshala and uh, CTIS. Being uh, from the pilot school, we have seen the journey of CS Patshala and uh, the numbers that are adopting this approach. It's really heartwarming. And I would like to congratulate the team of CS Patshala for their accomplishment through the years. Now, uh, I'll be presenting, uh, I'll be requesting the presenters of eight mathematics modules, like CT in mathematics. And uh, being a maths teacher myself, I feel that we are a privileged lot because the you know, CT and uh, mathematical thinking are very tightly intertwined. And it comes very naturally to a mathematics teacher. And also what happens is whenever a new problem is posed to a student, and uh, if a mathematical concept is uh, applied in um, software, mathematical thinking and CT work together to resolve or to approach the problem. So uh, they first, uh, you know, decompose the problem and then uh, think abstractly. And then, um, you know, either you choose or produce an algorithm which is appropriate for the problem and then debug if there is any error. So I think mathematics teachers are an advantaged lot when it comes to talking about CT. So now we have a bunch of very interesting presentations. And to begin with, I invite just a moment. Uh, Mr. Yogesh Sharma uh, from Pay Center School, Thermal, and Taluka, Galteshwar, Gujarat. Welcome. Thank sir. you, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. I am Yogesh Sharma, Gujarat ke Kheda district ki ek sarkari school mein math science ke teacher ke door par kariya karta hu. Mere school mein kaksha ek se aat tak total 492 students hai aur स्टैंडर्ड एट में 98 स्टूडेंट्स हैं और हम 14 टीचर्स हैं नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज अगर मैं आपको बोलूं कि 3 बाय 5 प्लस 1 बाय 15 करना है तो कितने लोग कर पाएंगे है ना ज्यादातर लोगों को मुश्किल ही हो सकती है बच्चों के लिए भी ये कठिन होता है आप समझ सकते हो कि जो फ्रैक्शन का एडिशन और सब्ट्रैक्शन करना होता है तो बच्चों के लिए ज्यादातर मुश्किलियां आती है तो इसके लिए मैंने कंप्यूटेशनल थिंकिंग की जो भी एक्टिविटीज है उसके साथ साथ मैंने मैथ्स को कैसे इंटीग्रेट कर सकते हैं कैसे जोड़ सकते हैं ऐसा सोचा और उसको मैंने अपनी क्लासरूम में अटेंड किया मैडम नेक्स्ट प्लीज नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज मैडम तो जो फ्रैक्शन का एडिशन और सब्ट्रैक्शन है उसको कैसे स्टेप बाय स्टेप सॉल्व करते हैं और कैसे उसके आंसर तक पहुंचते हैं तो उसको मैंने एक फ्लो चार्ट डिजाइन किया कि कैसे फर्स्ट स्टेप कैसे कहां पर जाना है और किस टाइप के उसको एनालिसिस करता है और कैसे उसका पैटर्न फाइंड आउट करना है और फिर फ्लो चार्ट के माध्यम से उसको कैसे आंसर तक सॉल्व करना है तो सबसे मैंने फ्लो चार्ट डिजाइन किया और उसको बच्चों को सिखाए एग्जांपल के थ्रू और प्रैक्टिस दी गई कि कैसे उसको फाइंड आउट करना है कैसे अपने आंसर तक पहुंचना है नेक्स्ट साल यहां पर आप देख सकते हैं फ्लो चार्ट तो फ्लो चार्ट में आप देख सकते हो कि कैसे जो मैथ्स का कोई भी एग्जांपल होता है तो उसको हम स्टेप बाय स्टेप कैसे आंसर तक पहुंचने वो हम बच्चों को सिखाते हैं तो वही मैंने फ्लो चार्ट में डिजाइन किया कि सबसे बच्चे पहले फाइंड आउट करेंगे कि कौन सी प्रोसेस करनी है और कोई किस टाइप के फ्रैक्शन है लाइक फ्रैक्शन है कि अनलाइक फ्रैक्शन है लाइक फ्रैक्शन है तो वो किस तरफ से जाएंगे जैसे कि ये फ्लो चार्ट में दिख रहा है लेफ्ट साइड और अगर अनलाइक फ्रैक्शन है तो वो इस साइड जाएंगे तो इसमें मैंने जो एलसीएम है उसका अलग से उनको बच्चों को सिखाया सिखाया हुआ था इसलिए मैंने इसमें ऐड नहीं किया है आप एग्जांपल भी देख सकते हैं नेक्स्ट स्लाइड मैम प्लीज 
चैलेंजेस की बात करें तो हमें जो निम्न सिद्धि वाले बच्चों थे उसमें काफ़ी दिक्कतें आ रही थी तो मैंने क्या किया कि जो अलग अलग बच्चे थे तो उनका एक डाइवर्स ग्रुप बना दिया और सब बच्चों को फिर से वो ग्रुप में एक्टिविटीज़ करने को सिखाई तो बच्चे एक दूसरे को सिखाते थे और एक दूसरे को इंट्रोड्यूस करते थे उसका जो पैटर्न होता है और फ्लो चार्ट को कैसे समझना है और कैसे उसके आंसर तक पहुंचना है उसको एक दूसरे दूसरे को सिखाते थे इस तरह से हमने इस चैलेंजेस को कम आउट किया नेक्स्ट लाइट प्लीज पूरी एक्टिविटी होने के बाद हमने एक यूनिटिस डिज़ाइन किया था और वो यूनिटिस सबको इंडिविजुअल दिया था और आप देख सकते हो कि ये जो बिफोर वाला यूनिट टेस्ट है वो पहले लिया हुआ था और जो आफ्टर एक्टिविटी वाला है वो आप देख सकते हो कि कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग की एक्टिविटी के बाद बच्चों ने काफ़ी इम्प्रूवमेंट किया है प्रीवियसली रिजल्ट में आप देख सकते हैं कि 31 वन परसेंट स्टूडेंट जो बिलो पासिंग मार्क्स थे और जो आफ्टर एक्सपेरिमेंट करने के बाद उन्होंने काफ़ी बहुत अच्छा इम्प्रूवमेंट किया एट से ज़्यादा रिड्यूस कर सकते हैं हम और आप देख सकते हैं कि 43 परसेंट ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स वेयर स्कोल मोर देन द 60 परसेंटेज सो इफेक्ट इज वेरी वेल नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज कंक्लूजन की बात करें तो आ, हम देख सकते हैं कि कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग की जो भी एक्टिविटीज़ है उसके बाद बच्चों में जो मैथ्स को सीखने का उनका तरीका वो कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल बढ़ता है और जो मैथ्स का फोबिया होता है कि भाई ये तो फ्रैक्शन को हमको तो नहीं आएगा तो उनमें भी उन्होंने काफ़ी कॉन्फिडेंस इंक्रीज किया और जो भी बच्चे जो ग्रुपिंग एक्टिविटीज़ की उसके साथ उनका टीम वर्क भी बहुत अच्छा बढ़ा है तो नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज मैम सो मैं सबसे पहले टी सी एस इग्नेट माई फ्यूचर टीम उनका शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहता हूँ और उन्होंने मुझे सी टी एस पास शाला में कैसे एब्स्ट्रैक्ट लिखना है कैसे उसको पार्टिसिपेट करना है वो सब सीखा है सो थैंक्स टू टी सी एफ्स टीम एंड सी टी एस ऑर्गेनाइजिंग टीम एंड माय कलीग्स एंड एस एस टीम सो थैंक यू एवरीवन इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस फॉर हिम वी हैव टाइम फॉर टू क्वेश्चंस यस प्लीज यस एक्चुअली प्री टेस्ट है ना वो सबसे पहले यूनिट जब होता है कंप्लीट तो उसको पहले लिया हुआ था ये बाद में लिया गया जब सिटी की एक्टिविटीज हमने की उसके बाद वो पोस्ट टेस्ट लिया हुआ था जी जी नहीं नहीं मैथमेटिक्स के लिए सर की थी इसलिए ओके थैंक यू एनीमैन एनी मोर क्वेश्चंस यस यस yes, जो हमको टी की ट्रेनिंग में सिखाया हुआ था कि सूडो को गैस माई बर्थडे और भी एक्टिविटीज़ थी वो सब सिखाई हुई थी उसके आधार से हमने फिर उसको इंटीग्रेट मैथ्स में किया था मैडम थैंक यू एनी वन एल्स थैंक्स टू ऑल वंस अगेन so coming up next is uh, prachiti dharmadhikari from school of scholars amravati a very good morning to one and all present here i am prachiti dharmadhikari from school of scholars amravati 
feel privileged to present my paper on integrating computational thinking in senior secondary mathematics. Next, please. So for senior secondary, the activity was conducted for with the students of class 12 uh, while teaching the topic determinants. And the prerequisite considered here was students are aware of solving the determinant. They are able to find the value of determinant. The objective of this activity was to frame and find the value of determinant of order 3 by 3 with the following conditions. The first one was students have to use any three different integers whose sum is 0. The second, no integer should be repeated in any row or column. And the third one, they have to check how many such determinants can be framed in all. And Mostly, the uh, objective is like they have to also find the value of such type of determinants. Next, please. So basically, uh, the challenge was there. Like, uh, firstly, while teaching the topic, we came across this question in NCRT textbook. And students uh, were scared of this. They were uh, using the lengthy method and solving the question. So wherein they found that these are all the algebraic expressions, variables used here. So this was the basic problem that students were not able to understand the problem. So here the problem was broken down to meaningful from complex to the simple and we thought of beginning it with integers because students are uh, friendly with integers, they would understand it better. Next please. So this was the activity which was conducted by students. Very first, it was uh, told to the students to select the integers, selection of integers, because we have to now replace the variables or algebraic expressions with integers to understand the problem. So selection of integers was done with two types. The first type was uh, 1, 2 and minus 3, wherein all the different integers were selected by students. Like if they generalize it, uh, if you have two, uh, two uh, elements, A and B, then the third one would be the ob obvious choice that minus of A plus B would be the third choice for them. So like it is 1, 2 and minus 3. And with these integers, they have to frame all possible determinants based on the given constraints. Later on, they have to check how many total number of such determinants are possible by using permutation without repetition. And lastly, they would draw the conclusion based on all this, that how many determinants are possible and what is the value of such type of determinants. So this is the work of students. The second type was uh, 2, minus 2 and 0. So students framed multiple determinants in the first case as well as in the second case. And then they checked out that how many different arrangements are possible and we get the determinants. So here the second type was if you have the two elements, a, opposite elements a and minus a, then obviously the third choice is 0. So instead of 2, they can take any number. So 2 minus 2 and 0, again they checked out all the uh, possible determinants. They arranged them and they also found the value of the determinants. Now what they came to know that in every case, they are getting the value of the determinant 0 in the first example type as well as in the second type of example. So here students were able to generalize the statement that value of all such type of determinants 3 by 3 with the stated condition is 0. Next please. Then student extended it to 4 by 4 type of determinant also and again they checked out that what value uh, do they reach. So here uh, also they got the value of the determinant was 0. Again they found out that how many total number of determinants are possible. So here also 4 factorial because they are using the pattern of arrangement of numbers without repetition. So 4 factorial. So here also they got to know that 24 such type of determinants are possible to be framed. Again they generalize that value of the determinant is 0. Next please. So this is the impact. Students started from, means the complex question was introduced to them but then it was made, brought up to simple. Again they were able to frame the complex type of questions on their own which involved the algebraic expressions and variables. Next, 
So here they got the opportunity to frame multiple determinants. This was the impact. Students argued and discussed on how many total number of such determinants are possible and how. They understood the logic behind the problem. Here the difficult becomes simple for them and they were able to identify the pattern of determinants and their value. Students enjoy framing determinants with all variations of the same constraints and raise it from integers to algebraic expressions. Teacher realizes, this is very important, that integrating CT in curriculum is not time consuming, consuming but it's time saving. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions for her? Thanks very much for this uh, interesting project. And um, I was a bit worried because when you talk about different uh, determinants, you know, one is that you will get this many different matrices, but they may evaluate to the same determinant value, right? Yes. So did students explore yes, yes, non-zero values, but getting the same determinant? Yes, sir. All of these kind, they have uh, cross-checked. Huh? What about when the determinant is zero? Did they look at it in terms of linear independence or any of the other things? That linear uh, independence, uh, they didn't look at, but the pattern and that they were able to frame, like if uh, they have to st arrange these determinants. So the first row they looked at, 1, 2, minus 3, and by permutation, without ah. repetition, they were able to frame all the type of determinants. Okay, and so then they draw the conclusion. I see. So you're really looking at the, the column operations, row operations, yes. how they end. Yes. It was interlinking with permutation as well. Did it help them understand the so-called uh, elementary row operation, which leads to the fact that such determinants have value 0, hmm. like whatever that r1 is r1 plus r2 plus r3? Right. I mean, did they, could they discover that rule on their own? Because of this exploration? Or Actually, uh, this activity I conducted especially to uh, train them in similar type of determinant type of question. Because even in uh, uh, JE advance or these type of exams, they have to face the questions of this kind, uh, wherein they have to answer the questions very quickly. So if they are able to figure out, although there are algebraic expressions or something, they don't have to go for the row operations or something. They have to just look at the problem, figure it out and answer it. So that was the mostly the objective over here because they are already knowing the row operations and all those things. That was the prerequisite which I have mentioned here. Yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So coming up next is Kanchan Janotkar Praveena Kamble from School of Scholars, Vartha. Good morning, respected dignitaries and all my dear teachers. I, Kanchan Janakar, along with Praveena Kamli, represent School of Scholars Vada, one of the renowned institute across Vidarbha of mega schools. We are going to represent applications of systematic listing and counting in basic operations in primary classes. Ma'am, next, please. Our objective is to practice systematic listing and counting combinations using objects and apply it to problem sol solving. At first, we had taken CS Parshala lesson, that is 03 LCR 02 three, uh, two in class 4. 
then after we have extended it by using um, blocks we have used blocks uh, to um, for listing counting and systematically there were 35 students in the class we have used the strategy that is simple to complex so at first we have given them two blocks and then after we have increased the number of blocks we have used a strategy that is simple to complex first two blocks and then increase the number of blocks the another strategy which we have used it was applying the systematic approach of listing and counting to solve problems based on mathematical operations so we have used here concrete to abstract approach so we have given them blocks our, our task was to find all possible pair of combination using given sets of blocks so we have given them two sets in first set we have given yellow and blue block and in set two we have given red and green block so student has to make combination with the blocks so from set one they have taken yellow block yellow with red and then um, red with green so with a uh, yellow block they have made two combinations and with blue block they have made two combinations they learned here the systematic listing and counting of combinations so uh, they have connected it with addition and multiplication addition like just like with yellow block two combinations and with two block two combination so two plus two four and just like that multiplication two ones are two and two twos are four so likewise they have connected um, with addition and multiplication now we have extended this activity again and we have increased number of blocks so at first we have given them in set one two blocks and in set two three blocks now the same systematic approach they have used here they have uh, with blue block they have made three combination blue with yellow blue with green and blue with black here they have used the letters also just like b with y b with g and b with b just like that they have made with pink block three combination here again they have connected it with addition and multiplication next please so these are the glimpses student enjoyed this activity very much and this is the evidence of it now over to pravina ma'am thank you ma'am now this activity we have conducted using concrete objects now we have uh, related uh, interlinked this activity with numbers uh, ma'am next please for that we have given them task find all possible pair of numbers from given two sets whose sum is 10 for that we have given them instructions they need to use each number from each set so like this they have made uh, all possible combinations and they li listed it for example 4 plus 2 is equals to 6 4 plus 6 is equals to 10 4 plus 8 is equals to 12 4 plus 5 is equals to 9 they made that uh, they made uh, all uh, possible combination here and again they listed pair of numbers who's getting the sum 10 so there uh, they got uh, they listed here 4 plus 5 is equals to 10 4 plus 5 is equals to 10 8 plus 2 is equals to 10 ma'am next slide please for uh, more practice we have given them some worksheets and there we have uh, increased the level of problems and the tasks to uh, given to them find all possible pair of numbers from given two sets whose sum is 50 and there are also same instructions we have given to them uh, from set 1 they have to use uh, 50 uh, 54 55 50 uh, 20 like that numbers they have to use uh, they uh, like this they have uh, uh, like this they have made another combination based on subtractions next slide please now impact after all these tasks we observed there students were able to list and count out various combinations of colored blocks using systematic approach students were able to apply ct skill listing and counting to solve problems based on arithmetic operations this helped to reinforce the concept of multiplication thank you
Any questions? Now we have Anita Pawar, Ashwini Udkhede, Rajeshri Saraf from School of Scholars, Okola. Good morning to one and all. I am Ashwini Utkhede and she is my colleague Anita Pawar and we are from School of Scholar Kaulkhed, Akola. First of all, I would like to thank organizing committee for giving me an opportunity to present my paper on the topic activities to enhance city skills. In our school, we are implementing CS Patshala curriculum from the year 2017-18 and today Approximately 4,000 plus students are enjoying this journey with us. Next slide, please, ma'am. So we have conducted an activity for class 10th student on the topic polynomial. As we all know that the topic itself is very difficult, complex, and abstract to understand. So we have thought of engaging the students in the activity wherein student will be exploring the geometrical meaning of zeros of polynomial using GeoGebra tool. For this activity, the class of 40 student was divided into group. Student have worked in a group, they have framed the polynomial by their choices and they have started working from the simple polynomial that is linear polynomial to the complex one that is cubic polynomial. Next slide, slide please ma'am. So in the first step, students have explored the various examples of linear polynomial of a type y is equal to ax plus b and observed the graphs for all these examples and noted their observation. On the basis of their observations, they have uh, noted some certain patterns in the graphical behavior of the type of linear polynomial. So they have observed that for the polynomial y is equal to ax plus b, the graph is always a straight line which intersects the x-axis at one point only. And this point is always of the form minus b by a zero. This value minus b by a also satisfies the equation y is equal to ax plus b. Next slide, please. After exploring the many examples of linear polynomial in this step two, they have tried the examples of quadratic polynomial and they were trying to find and search the pattern which they have observed in their first attempt. But unlike linear polynomial, here the line was not as straight but instead of that they got the curve which intersects the x-axis at two distinct points. Students have also observed that the orientation of curve changes as the value of a changes, that is as the coefficient of x square changes. And here they have noted that the curve intersects the x-axis at two distinct points. So whatever they have observed and uh, recorded the pattern in case of linear polynomial, same they were in the same pattern they were trying to identify it in case of quadratic polynomial and they have recorded their observations which they have further generalized. While exploring these examples of quadratic polynomial, they have come across with different situation. Ma'am, next slide please. Wherein they got these type of curves where they were intersecting the x-axis at one point only and for some of the examples, the curve was not at all touching the x-axis at any point. So on these uh, observations, students have concluded that the quadratic polynomial can have maximum number of two zeros. Later on, 
they have explored and tried the examples of cubic polynomial as well, wherein they could see that the curve for the cubic polynomial intersects at three distinct point for some of the example at two distinct point and for some of the example at one point only. So they concluded their uh, observation made the generalization that cubic polynomial can have maximum three zeros which leads to generalization that a polynomial of degree n can have maximum n number of zeros. So how this activity has impacted their learning will be shared with you by Anita Ma'am. Next slide. <coughs> the impact of the, this activity is uh, general equation of a polynomial of varying degree is easily understood when we broke down it um, uh, as different types. Comparing the visual representation of the equations using apps like GeoGebra help in figuring out the similarities and variations among them. Understanding the relationship between degree and uh, number of zero of polynomial through verification. So through this activity students have used decomposition from where they have started with the simple linear polynomial to the complex examples of cubic polynomial. The visual representation through GeoGebra has helped them to understand the exact meaning of uh, zeros of polynomial and the generalization made them to understand the relationship between the zeros and the degree of polynomial. Thank you so much. If there are any questions, you may go ahead. Ma'am, for which standard it is? Uh, Class 10th. Class 10th. So how long did it take for the activity to be implemented? Three to four periods, ma'am. Only three to four periods? They yes. They draw all the parabolas and... Uh, Myself, Kalpana, uh, faculty of yes. all those things. Yes. With the GeoGebra tool. They did it in periods, like in first period, they have explored the examples of linear polynomial and noted their observation. They discussed in a group. Likewise, we move on to four to five periods for all these three types of polynomial. So you mean to say all the students, whoever are there in the classroom, could do all the activity? Yes, all of them were engaged. And they had the discussions in group. They share it with the teachers. Wherever they find teacher support, that was provided. And then the generalization made, which was there in their textbook. So instead of teaching it traditionally, we have tried and implemented it in the classroom to make it more fun way of learning and reaching to every learner in the class. So um, I'm a bit curious about the case of the quadratic polynomial with no zeros. Yes, sir. Um, they found some you showed, and but did they explore more on when you would have no zeros, or uh, did they find it like by accident, or? No, sir. They have tried the quadratic polynomial. As I said in the first example, that they have tried to change the coefficient of x square. Like, uh -huh. if it is positive, uh -huh. then what type of orientation do we have for the curve? Correct. And yeah. if we change it to the negative, then how does the orientation changes? Likewise, they have done it for the uh, equal zeros and for no zero cases as well. I see. Yes. Oh, did they come up with some conditions or? Uh, um, Okay, anyway, just, <laughs> I'm just curious to know how they explore, yeah, thanks. Same type of question, yes. like if it doesn't intersect x-axis, I think Sarah was also asking the same, so could they conclude that there will be no real zero imaginary yes. roots, this yes. one which is advanced for class 10, so were they able to Con come to that conclusion by using the GeoGebra? Yes, ma'am. As the curve was not intersecting the x-axis at any of the points, so there they conclude that no real zero exists for this type of polynomial. Uh, so I was saying I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say that that he used an exploration-based approach where the students kind of discovered that 
in groups i think that's a very powerful way of for kids to learn and retain that so just very happy to see that that's all. thank you so much sir thanks a lot Now I invite upon Dr. M. Kalpana and uh, B. Chamundeshwari from Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Gurukulam for girls, Valmiki Puram. Are they here? Myself, Kalpana, faculty of mathematics in Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Gurukulam, Valmiki Puram. I am a mathematics teacher, but I am not an expert in mathematics. In order to improve my learning, that's why I am presenting here. My presentation is how mentees understanding the quadrilaterals, how we can apply the computational thinking into the quadrilaterals for 8th class students. We know computational thinking is a step-by-step -step process and it is a learning by doing activity. Here I use an activity. In this activity I use four long scales, four circular protractors and screws. Here students will be understand a better way with the help of this activity by measuring the all sides and angles. Student will easily identify and understanding the types of the quadrilateral by this activity. Here arranging the scales with this help of quadrilaterals and fix them with the circular protractors with the help of screws we can change the position of the scales with the help of screws in this activity what challenges we faced for the students is students will found it is a difficulty to understand the properties of the quadrilaterals by using pen and paper or diagrams so I adopted this approach by learning and doing and means here learning by doing activity we are using for the exterior angle concept is a realistic process and this activity will help our students deepen their understanding and for the quadrilaters and also they are very interested to understanding by using this activity. Quadrilaterals will typically imply approved forms with four sides like rectangle, quadrilaterals are rectangle shape and square shape and trapezium and also kite shape. Impact of the students are first way interesting the work with the using the circular protractors and identify the types and properties of the quadrilaterals by moving the scales. The students were able to understand the concept of exterior angles by using the circular protractors. Here by using the circular protractors, students will easily understanding the exterior, exterior angle sum is 360 degrees of a quadrilateral. Quadrilaterals are utilized in graphic arts, sculpture, logos, packaging, computers programs and web designings were so prevalent so here we are using the quadrilaters understanding means this is students will be easily understanding and more students felt flexible this is my presentation thank you So obviously, uh, I'm not sure if you have any questions for her. So thank you, Dr. Kalpana. Now we have V. Suvarchala and C.H. Vani from Dr. Ambedkar Gurukulam 
குட்டமுக்கலா குண்டமுக்கலா A very good morning to everyone present here. I am Suvarshila Vangara from Andhra Pradesh Residential Educational Institutions, Kuntamukkala. I am very honored to be present my presentation with a great immense pleasure. I learned about computational thinking uh, by Krupa Ma'am uh, on October 20th, 2022. That, uh, the two-day session was a great learning experience for me. I thought theoretically about computational thinking. I'm waiting for implement that in, to in my classroom. For, uh, as a conference, CDIS conference was uh, held. Um, I mean, I know about a conference. I am very curious to participate in that. Uh, I'm, uh, so I am here now. I In my school, there were around uh, 640 students. Um, I teach mathematics for a grade 6 and 7 students. As a teacher, I believe that we have to implement, we have to think about uh, uh, the student's point of view. We have to uh, change our uh, strategy in the class also. I mean, before class, we, uh, we plan something. And in the class, we plan another thing uh, in the student's point of view, we think. Uh, as Mukesh sir said that we have to teach how students want to learn. So uh, that implemented here in my classroom. Uh, the title of my presentation was CT in Explaining Rotational Symmetry. The, con the title itself, uh, itself saying that rotational symmetry, I, I used, uh, I want to explain for grade 7 students, rotational symmetry, I used the concept of computational thinking. Before going to the class, I want to memorize the topic of uh, line symmetry uh, previous day. Uh, where I uh, asked the students about uh, is your uh, image and the mirror image looks the same or not. Some students said yes, uh, the image should be same, but few said that the right of uh, us will show the left in the mirror. So I uh, added one, po one more point into my classroom that uh, line symmetry is also called as reflection symmetry or um, you know, mirror image symmetry. So I concluded that uh, end. And now I started my uh, uh, rotational symmetry actual class by telling that if you rotate an object, we have to get the same figure. Uh, how many times we rotate, the, that is the order. And how uh, what is the uh, smallest angle we are getting, the same figure is the angle of rotation. By telling this, the students uh, are in with blank faces. So I used computational thinking by making them, the, I grouped the uh, students uh, by making simple ca card like this of angles, denoting angles from 0 to 360 degrees. There, uh, and uh, I used, uh, if you take a letter, yes. From the starting, there are seventh class students. I started from A to Z letters. They made A to Z letters and some figures in those textbooks. If you see here, here is the A started at uh, zero degree. They rotate uh, in either. The first challenge faced was either they have to rotate clockwise direction or in anti-clockwise direction. So that I made uh, for one uh, anti-clockwise direction and one for a clockwise direction. If we go for through clockwise direction, we can't get A shape. They have to keep mind A shape in their minds and they have to rotate the use this activity. Each and every student uses this by rotating completely i mean complete angle means three by rotating after 360 degrees we get a for any figure in the universe if you uh, simply turn the pen i am getting the pen shape by rotating 360 degrees so that uh, for our uh, mobile is different for you if you take any figure in the mobile any shape in the uh, um, universe looks exactly same by rotating completely 360 degrees but uh, here is the question was uh, what is the order? How we get uh, one figure has rotational symmetry and one is not? Th there I uh, uh, added one point that if the order is two, then only the one second. If you take wind wheel shape, if uh, we rotate this wind wheel by 90 degrees angle, it looks exactly same. 
so for the denotion i made a one point uh, like uh, he from he, uh, here so that uh, they can easily understand where they started so uh, uh, in the class 7 students uh, they prepared this chart uh, the challenge was uh, we uh, exp um, explored uh, i mean we um, changed uh, we faced the challenge but we uh, Imp uh, implemented that uh, in my class next slide please ma'am by that uh, students uh, learn by doing this was the students prepared uh, a to z letters and some shapes uh, they uh, do the activity so that th now they can imp uh, tell that uh, which letter has uh, rotational symmetry and which letter doesn't have a rotational symmetry and also uh, that they can conclude uh, this uh, topic to tessellation if the we have order of uh, if you see the figure it looks exactly same of 90 degrees if this shape is same here the shape the equal shape we are uh, taking side by side is tessellation they implemented that uh, tessellation topic also from this uh, activity uh, i my uh, heartfelt gratitude to all the members of uh, cs partishala team and the tcs members who have uh, given this great opportunity and my uh, ap sfaris uh, society team also uh, for selecting me for the project uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Any questions, please? Okay. Thank you. Now I invite upon J. Vishweshwar Rao, K. Ram Murthy, and R. Vijay Kumar from Dr. Ambedkar Gurukulam, Kolli Walasa Srikakulam. Good morning all. I am J. Vishwasarrao, PGT Mathematics, working at Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Gurukulam, Kholiwalsa Srikakalam District. It is under APSWRE Society. Our sir, Sanjeev Rao sir, already explained about our society. Madam, next slide, please. Madam, next slide. <laughs> Hello? Next, madam. Next. So I am going to explain this activity, how to count number of squares in a square grid. After completing the activity, without counting how to uh, say number of squares in a square grid. Next, madam, please. So decomposition of the activity. Start with a simple case. I take one by one square. There is nothing to count. There is a one square. Increasing the <laughs> complexity, I take two by two square, three by three square. Uh, in two by two square, there are five squares. In 3 by 3, there are 14. In 4 by 4, there are 30, so on. So after completion of the observation, pattern and generalization, students observe the relationship between the size of the square and the number of squares. The number of squares are 1, 5, 14, 30, so on. These numbers can be generalized using formula. Next, madam. So this is the activity. I ask the students to draw 2 by 2 square and count now how many squares are in that square. They usually, many of the students say that 4. I, I instruct the student to, to consider big square, then they will say 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. It can be expressed as sum of squares 2 square plus 1 square is equal to 5. Next, man. This is the, some glimpses. Next. 
So now I increasing the complexity. Ask the student to draw three by three square gate Goodbye. and ask the student how many squares are there in. So they simply say that you apply the same rule, nine plus one is equal to ten. I ask the students to consider two by two squares are also. So that is one by one nine, two by two four, three by three one, total is fourteen. It can be expressed as one square plus two square plus three square is nothing but fourteen. Increase the complexity. Next, madam. So this is the activity. Next, this is five by four square gate. The, the students apply the same rule when they can come count in 3 by 3 that is 5 by 5 25 4 by 4 16 so on one 25 plus 16 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 55 now i give some time to the students and uh, ask them to observe what are the pattern what is the pattern what is the sequence next madam so this is the activity next madam this is the expression 1 square 2 square 3 square 4 square 5 square that is the observation next madam so now I ask the students without drawing and without counting the square grid, how many squares are there in 7 by 7 grid? They use the same rule and observation. They simply say that sum of 1 square plus 2 square, 3 square up to 7 square. Now I ask the students, can it apply to the n by n square grid? Yes, that is 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square plus n square. Next, madam. <coughs> so create formula after observation. A observation create formula using the patterns you observe to create a formula that calculates the number of squares in a square of any size starting from n square or starting from one square next madam so i ask the students is there any uh, formula for one square plus two square plus three square up to n square or the what is the value of uh, sum of first squares of uh, sum of squares of first n natural numbers so already they know that is n in 10 plus 1 2 n plus 1 by 6 next madam so test the formula. After connecting, we should test the formula. Verify the accuracy of your formula by applying it to different uh, square sizes and comparing the results to, with your previous counts. If the formula consistently, Madam Beck, if, we, if the formula consistently produces the correct number of squares, it likely to be correct. By using computational thinking, you can systematically approach the problem of finding the number of squares in a square and arrive at a formula that allows you to calculate for squares of any size. Next, madam. I take a daily life problem. Many of the students play chessboard. How many squares are there in chessboard? So that is 8, eight, eight by 8 grade. Okay. Using Which formula, they simply say that 2 not 4. Instruct the student to say take any size of square and count the number of squares by using verify the result. Next, madam. I give some thinking based questions. What is the sum of the squares of first and even natural numbers? And also, what is the sum of the squares first and odd natural numbers? Students will have to think. Next, what are the challenges faced while conducting this activity? Students have to draw and collect number of square boards and expensive. As the length of the square increases, counting of the squares using square grid becomes increasingly difficult. Identifying and connecting the formula to pattern, it is also very difficult. Next, madam. What are the impact? Students use an inductive method observing to create or to solve puzzles, develop logical thinking, improve creating ideas, multi-dimensional thinking, multi-dimensional thinking means geometry, algebra, number system, the connecting was observed in students which lead students to answer considering various perspectives. Next man. Students learn to connect, connect the geometrical concept to algebra and number system. Puzzle solving techniques are basic building blocks of complex problem solving. This activity helped students to do pattern recognition, breaking problem into simpler parts and arriving the formula. Next, madam. So CT is being grand concept behind AI and machine learning. Students develop a positive attitude towards understanding the AI concepts. Our use case clearly depicts that CT way of teaching ensures future ready students as future is going to be completely AI driven. So thank you very much. Next, madam. This is the link, video link to my students act, do activity in my classroom. Uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. Our great secretary, sir, Pawan Muthi, sir. Our great AMO, sir, Sanjeev Rao, sir. And Chandra Prakash, sir. A special thanks for uh, Sonia, madam, and Lakshmi, madam, and Raman, sir, who polished me to conduct this activity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any questions, please? 
Yeah, thank you, sir. Very nice activity. I'm curious whether you got students to visualize like the sum of uh, the squares. Yes, like sir. If you look at the grid yes, and sir. if you start, say, from the left top or, or any this thing, you can first take the one, then you can take the three. Yes, sir. Then you can take the five. I don't know whether you tried that because very interestingly, in a visual way, you can see that one squared plus two squared plus three squared. So just one an idea if you have not tried it. You, I'll, I'll, uh, during lunch, I'll show you if it is not clear. I'm saying that you by grouping these squares in the grid in different ways, a okay, lot okay, of the things uh, you can realize. Uh, okay, like like uh, an L shape. Uh, like uh, if uh, you do like an L shape uh, thing. I, I, I yeah. actually bring that. Uh, uh, so you uh, bring that. Uh, so wonderful. But yeah. in the picture, it is not yeah, possible yeah. to show. No, no, it's it's good to know that you did that. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I, I bring the. I show okay. that, sir. Okay. Any questions? Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I invite upon C. Rachel Vani and Dr. Brag from Sulur Pet Tirupati. Good morning, one and all. I'm Rachel working as postgraduate maths teacher from Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Gurukulam, Sulurpet. My abstract is on applications of trigonometry. Next, ma'am. This is my school running with 1,060 girl students, and we are 30 teaching staffs. We have introduced this computational thinking only last year. Next, ma'am. Though it was a new approach, our students, uh, they showed great interest in developing their uh, algorithmical skills and to learn the ma math concepts in an uh, easy playway method. Next, ma'am. So I would like to put before you the challenges I faced while teaching these applications of trigonometry. First of all, the problem from tri applications of trigonometry needed many requisites for a student which confused them, which made them uh, a bit uh, lagging to straight away approach the sol solving the problem. The first prerequisite, the first challenge they faced was they could not remember the values of trigonometric functions. So what they did was, the challenge was that all the day they by hearted the values and by the end of the day they failed to recall the values and even they are left uh, unconfident with the value they recalled. The second challenge they faced was they could not attribute the values for uh, the sides of the right triangle. To meet these two challenges, I have come up with a small activity. The f to meet the first challenge, next ma'am, I have uh, start uh, I have created this activity which consisted of three set of cards and the first set of cards I had written all the functions trigonometrical functions and the second set of cards consisted of the angles 0 30 45 60 and 90 and the third set of card consisted of the values of these trigonometric functions now what I have done in my class is I have divided my class into three groups the first group from the first group, I have called up a girl. She would collect the first set of cards and she would pick a card from the first set and then place it here and then see the trigonometric. The second girl picks up a card from the second pile and the third girl, she would pick up a card from the third set and she would decide or rather recall and um, which uh, recall to make it a true statement. So the first one picks up from the function, the second one picks up from the angle, and the third one, she will wait 
to decide and recall whether that is a true statement. This is, I thought that was a simple activity, but the students learned by doing that. They corrected their own mistakes. We all know that visual impact adds to our memory. So that I achieved with this a small activity. So the groups were changed and the whole class was involved in this activity. And so they changed their roles until they were confident with the exact value of the trigonometric function. So this was the first challenge I uh, overcame. The second challenge was that, Madam Sex, Madam Next. So the second challenge, so I have helped them to create their own clinometer and help them to measure the angle of elevation. So students were very much interested to create their own clinometer. And with the help of that, they started, they wanted to measure the height of the flagpole in their school. So with that, when they tried to measure the angle, they were very clear that the, uh, with the angle of elevation, with the angle they measured, what was the um, um, adjacent side of the triangle, what was the opposite side of the triangle, what are the attributes to be given. Because after reading the four or five sentences problem, they faced a bit of trouble to attribute the values to adjacent and opposite sides of a right triangle. So with the help of this, I overcame and the students were a lot interested uh, in solving these problems. Madam, next. So the impact of uh, using these two activities, so the students, they could solve the problem with an ease. They were very enjoy they were in they enjoyed this activity very much. So the impact of using this computational thinking in my classroom, so it was a good impact for the student. It was a, a great impact for the students. Uh, that, that means they enjoyed the activity. They learned the concept with ease. Along with that, I too had a great impact of the CT while implementing in my classroom. What was that is I was all the time uh, received an invitation with a smile because that our math teachers, I think, they can easily understand. When we enter the class, we don't receive an invitation with a smile. So that too, for these applications of trigonometry, the students were reluctant towards this chapter, but I achieved a success by implementing this computational thinking. And all the day, I received an invitation because they were expecting me to come into the class with a new game. So they, were, they forgot totally about that I'm a math teacher, I'm a games teacher. So she will today come with uh, some game and she will definitely teach the class. So that I achieved and um, that was how computational thinking was very good uh, for uh, and it is an added advantage and for a math teacher I think so. So I would like to thank our secretary our Power Muthi sir and our ma AMO sir Sanjeev Rao Garu or Chandra Prakash sir and my district coordinator Dr. Vijay Bharti Garu and a special thanks to Sonia ma'am Lakshmi Gandhi Garu and Ramajan sir who have uh, given me an opportunity to present my paper on this stage. Thank you all. Thank you, Rachel. Rachel is from Dr. B.R. Ambedkar Gurukulam, Sulur Pet, Tirupati. A small correction there. Thank you. Here, one thing. Uh, so, uh, isn't it another way of re reinforcing the memorization? Yes, or no, no, no. I'm. What I want to say, uh, when we are telling, for example, sine 45 degrees, this much uh, value. So, isn't it another way of just memorizing the head fact? Or are they able to visualize also what the sign data means? So, so for this standard, I think just ha, ha, food for thought. 